If you have your Bibles this evening, if you will turn with me to the book of 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter number 3. Thank you, worship team, for taking us into the presence of the Lord. Each one of you, thank you so much for your ministry. 2 Timothy chapter number 3. In this passage we're going to read together, we find the Apostle Paul, and he is speaking in the role of a spiritual father to a young preacher by the name of Timothy. Timothy is his son in the faith, and it is in this third chapter that he gives him exhortation, he gives him encouragement concerning the last days. This morning I shared with you concerning the rapture of the church, and tonight I want to, I want to speak to you tonight as believers who are ready for the rapture. I want to speak to your heart tonight as men and women who have been in the faith. Many of you have been in the faith for many years. You have walked faithfully with God. You have been committed to the cause of the kingdom, many of you, for the majority of your life. I want to speak to you tonight some words that we find the apostle speaking to this young preacher. Um, let's begin, actually, let's begin, I had not planned, but let's begin back in verse number one, Second Timothy 3 and verse 1, but mark this, there'll be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, that's probably one of the strongest uh, verses in this text we've read thus far. Having a form of godliness, but denying its power, have nothing to do with such people. And if you'll skip down to verse number 10. You, however, know my, all about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, persecutions, sufferings, what kinds of things happened to me in Antioch and Iconium, Lystra, the persecutions that I endured. Yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. That's a good word in the midst of trouble, isn't it? In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. While evildoers and imposters will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of because you know those from whom you have learned it. And how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. For all Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. I want you to focus your attention tonight on verse number 14, where the apostle said, but as for you, continue in what you've learned and become convinced of. Paul is warning Timothy concerning the end times, concerning him, uh, excuse me, warning him concerning the spiritual climate, what things will be like near the time of the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
he gives a very accurate description of the world that you and I live in today in the the social and cultural climate that we are in the midst of. He says men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, ungrateful, unholy, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Verse 5 says, then there'll be a people who will have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. They will have the look of Christianity. They will have the look of religious but nothing to back it up, nothing to substantiate the life they so profess. Paul tells him that things are going to get more and more difficult as time goes. In fact, he says that it will increase as time goes along, which reiterates the words of Jesus in Matthew 24 when Jesus said, because wickedness uh, shall increase. He says the love of many will grow cold. In fact, the NIV says the love of most will grow cold. Paul says in his earlier letter in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, he says the Spirit clearly says that in the latter times some will abandon the faith. They will follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. One of the great dangers of the last days will be that of deception. The apostle then continues on in chapter 3 and he tells them in verses 10 and 11 in our text tonight how that Paul himself has been persecuted, how that Paul has been in prison. He continues on in verse number 12 to tell him these words that reiterate words that are uh, active and relevant in the day and age that you and I live in. He says, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. First John tells us that the spirit of Antichrist is already at work. Jesus himself said, they will hate you, they will revile you, they will persecute you, they will say all manner of evil against you, which lines up with Romans chapter 8 and verse 7 when he says that the sinful mind is hostile towards God. Paul continues on with his discourse with Timothy and he says, while this is going on, evil men and imposters will simply go from bad to worse, deceiving others and they themselves being deceived. Paul tells us and young Timothy, then the last days people will think only of themselves. Sin will be in full bloom. He says, you know that I have been persecuted He says, you know that I have been in prison, and while all this has gone on, we know that those who are full of evil and full of sin will not only decrease, but yet it will increase in what they're doing. Then he includes with one important statement, and I believe this is the word that I want to share with you tonight in this place. Verse number 14. He describes all of this atmosphere, but then he brings it down to Timothy's life and he says, but as for you. Now the truth is those verses that are preceding verse 14, frankly, are not um, verses that usually encourage us. They're not verses that spur us on and make us, nobody's doing jumping jacks and nobody's shouting and hollering about those verses. Frankly, those verses are sobering to us. Those verses are ones that uh, cause us to, to be considering the things that are going on in the world around us today. The atmosphere spiritually of our world that we're in today is changing and it is changing rapidly. Probably never has there been a time in my life nor in your life where we have seen um, Christianity coming more under the hand of persecution than we have ever seen in all history. Jesus' words are being fulfilled. They will hate you. They will despise you. They will say all manner of evil against you. There was a time even in the United States, you know, as I share, we're talking about worldwide, but there was a time in the United States of America when it was, uh, it was deemed, if you will, it was popular to be a believer. We don't live in those days. 
uh, any longer. And so that is the picture that Paul is painting, if you will, bringing this young preacher into verse number 14. He says, but as for you, he says, I've spoken to you about what the climate will be of unbelievers. He says, but let me speak to you and let me speak to your heart, Timothy. But as for you, continue in what you have learned. And if you, uh, if you have a New Living Translation, the New Living Translation renders verse 14 in this way. He says, but you must remain faithful. The word for the church in the last days is a word of faithfulness. Faithfulness in the end is vital and absolute. The words that we all look forward to hearing one day have been recorded in Matthew 25 and 21 when he said, well done, good and faithful servant. Every believer who's probably ever lived and has ever heard messages or read through that scripture has uh, thought of themselves standing before the throne of God and they have been desirous to hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. But my friend tonight, to hear those words are contingent on the fact of one remaining faithful for the long haul. One of the characteristics of the last days will be those who will fall asleep spiritually. Scripture gives us example after example of those who become lethargic or complacent, numb, if you will, in their faith prior to the coming of the king. Those who, like the five foolish virgins in Matthew 25, fell asleep as they were waiting on the bridegroom to come, and as a result, they were left out of the wedding banquet. This morning, I, I shared with you the fact that there would have been a time when those virgins would have been prepared because they came and they had oil in their lamp. They just didn't bring oil for the long haul. They had prepared for the immediate time, but they had not prepared to stay spiritually awake, spiritually alert, spiritually uh, awake all the way to the end. Friends, we don't know how long it's going to be before Jesus comes. I don't know if Jesus, if we'll wake up tomorrow and the trumpet will sound and tomorrow will be the day, or friends, I don't know if it'll be 10 more years. Time would tell me and things that I read in the papers would, would say, surely his coming is very soon. But listen, it's not up for us to uh, come to the conclusion of when he will come because as we read this morning, no one knows except the Father. And the Father continues to be patient because he wants no one to perish but all to come to repentance. So friends, if Jesus waits 10 more years and in that 10-year period things continue to escalate and things continue to worsen around us, we must remain faithful. That is the call for us. There's probably never been a day that I have been more convinced than I am today of our great need of the Holy Spirit. Friends, the Holy Spirit has not been given just to make you feel good it's not been given to give you a Pentecostal experience alone. The Holy Spirit was given to be a comforter and a guide. The Holy Spirit was given that we might have one that would lead us. When we live in a day of lots of confusion, the Holy Spirit would come along beside us and he would lead us and guide us into all truth. It is the Holy Spirit that will empower us to be witnesses. And I'm so thankful for his empowerment that I could be a witness. But friends, he will also empower you to stay strong. The Holy Spirit will also empower you to remain faithful. The Holy Spirit will empower you to stand firm. When everything else around you is shifting, the Holy Spirit will give you the power you need to remain faithful, steadfast, and secure. Now that you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and you have walked down this road called Christianity, you understand this walk is not one that just happens. 
This walk sometimes comes through blood, sweat, and tears. This is a journey. There's a fight that we fight. Frankly, you didn't sign up for this just because it was the easy road. You didn't sign up for this just because of all the blessings you and I would receive. And I'm thankful for his blessings. But as he who has called us is faithful, may you and I be found faithful. You didn't sign up because you were never going to have to face troubles and trials. But friends, let me tell you this. I don't know what days are ahead of us. I don't know as believers what you and I will face. I don't know what our children and our young people will face of the days ahead. I can't comprehend the things that literally today our brothers and sisters around the world are going through. Many of our brothers and sisters are giving their lives for the cause of Christ at the hands of ISIS. And around the world, you and I have brothers and sisters in China who are in prison for their faith, many of them being tortured, uh, many of them daily being beaten. Uh, they are going through things that I'm not sure you and I as believers in America have the ability to comprehend because we have been so blessed to live in the land of the free. But they are going through incredible difficulties. Friends, I don't know what things you and I may walk through in the days ahead, but hear me tonight. It will be worth every mile we walk. It will be worth every trial we face. It will be worth every obstacle you have to encounter. It will be worth every mountain you climb over. And it will be worth every valley you have walked through. It will be worth every tear that you shed. It will be worth every heartache you have encountered. It will be worth it all. So the word to you and I tonight is remain faithful. Remain faithful. The apostle Gave these words in 1 Corinthians 4 and 17. He said, our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. He said in verse 18, so we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Friends, it's going to be worth it. I encourage you, stand steadfast. If there's ever been a day that I would encourage you to press on in your faith, it is today. Today is not the day to take time off. Today is not the day to just kind of idly sit back. I encourage you, friend, you need to grow in your faith in Jesus Christ. You need to be growing in your relationship with Jesus. You know, there are times, it is human nature, that when we go through times that are easy, how many of you know we usually, we relax back? When we go through times when it's not difficult, and, and frankly, we are blessed and we walk a blessing, it is so easy to back off. Friends, I encourage you today, today is not the day to back off. Today is not the day to take a back seat. Today is not the day to take a break. I would encourage you to press on. And I would encourage you to consider in your life. I would encourage you to consider in your life in regard to your relationship with Jesus Christ. Are you growing in your faith? Are you growing in your faith? Or are you in a season of maintenance? Are you just maintaining your walk with Christ? Are you just maintaining and kind of holding on and walking this walk? Friends, I want to encourage you to grow in your faith. Listen, that won't just happen. You're going to have to press on. You're going to have to work hard. The apostle Paul said, I forget what is behind me. And he said, I press on to what is ahead of me. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Spur one another on and encourage one another on in their faith. Friends, this is the day we need to be growing in our faith. We can't just kind of be floating downstream. Listen, my dad always told me, I remember growing up and my father would tell me, he'd say, son, he'd say, if you are pushing a heavy weight up a hill, he said, 
And you on the way up think, wow, I've been going a long time in this journey. And he said, if you think to yourself, I just need to stop and pause for a little bit. He said, son, you won't be able to remain in that position any length of time. He said, you're going to have to continue to press on. He said, because if you stand under that load very long, he said, it won't be long until that load is going to start pushing you back down the hill. Friends, I want to encourage you, don't stop in the midst of the fight. Don't you let off in your relationship with Jesus Christ. Don't you let off in your passion for Jesus. If anything, I want to spur you on. Grow in greater depth with Jesus Christ. Know him more. Have a greater desire for his word. Have a greater desire for prayer. Have a greater desire for his presence. This is not the day to take a back seat, but this is the day to reach forward and give it all we've got Friends, but as for you, remain faithful. Remain faithful. Be you steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know your labor is not in vain. 1 Corinthians 15 and 58 tells us. The writer of the book of Hebrews said in chapter 10 and verse 36, Do not cast off your confidence for it has great reward. Remain faithful. Give it your best. Press on to reach for the prize. Paul said in Philippians 3 and 12, not that I've already attained all this or have already been made perfect, but I press on. Verse 13, I mentioned to you earlier, but this one thing I do, forgetting what is behind, straining straining toward what is ahead. Listen, it's not easy to get ahead. It's not easy to move on. Sometimes it comes through prayer and fasting. Sometimes it comes through mourning and weeping. Sometimes it comes in the midst of the fight. But I strain, he said, and I press on towards the goal. Paul said in the last days, many are going to go by the wayside. Many will become lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. He said, but as for you, really, really what Paul was saying is he said, all these evil imposters are going to go from bad to worse. These people are going to uh, have a form of God, but deny the power of. He says, but really, what does that have to do with you, Timothy? What does that have to do with you? Because you've got a call in your life. Friends, tonight as you've gathered in this place, I submit to you, you have a call on your life. You are to be a light in the midst of the darkness. Jesus said you're supposed to be like a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Friends, it's not time to take a break. We must press on. But the promise in pressing on is it will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will erase. So friends, bravely run the race. Till we see Jesus Christ. Fight the good fight of faith. Paul said there will be those who will leave the faith. But you remain faithful. He said many will go from bad to worse. Many will get caught up in the things of the day that will cause their hearts to grow cold. As I was in preparation for this morning and this evening reading in Matthew 24... My heart was so stirred as I read the, the text there in Matthew 24, and I believe it's 36, where he said, because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most would grow cold. Friends, that's, that is an alarming passage. That's alarming. If, 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 listen, we can't sit idle. We can't sit idle. We can't sit idle. Listen, you know one of the problems, when Paula and I, Occasionally we uh, sit down with couples and we do some marital counseling. And sometimes we'll, we'll counsel with couples who've been married 5 years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. And, and we'll sit down. And, and I'm amazed, uh, honestly, sometimes at the behavior of people. Um, they'll come to the office and you just, you, after sometimes they leave, you just kind of shake your head. And, and you kind of have to say, how are these the same people that 10, 15, 20 years stood on 
uh, in, a, in a church and looked into one another's eyes and said, till death, till death, we're not going to part. And I'm telling you, there's sometimes in the office, you think they're going to kill each other when they walk in the door. And you think, how, how does this happen? There's been no adultery. No one's been unfaithful. But yet they're about ready to kill each other. Friends, it happens gradually. It happens day by day. One day, one of them just, just kind of spouts off and just says what's on their mind and cuts the other person in the core. And you know what? Hey, no harm, no foul. We just go on through the day. Well, I, I'm free to speak my mind, irregardless of how it hurts you. And what happens is day goes, day goes. Well, you know what? The next time, they're a little more bold. And then, you know what? This situation happens, and that situation happens, and over time, little by little, people become complacent in their relationship. Friends, how do people fall away from a relationship with Christ? How do people who one day walk to an altar and with hearts poured out and tears flowed down their cheeks and they got up from the altar and they said, I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm changed, I'm transformed, and truly... They had to be transformed. And you say, how? How do these people come now to be a people who have a form of godliness or people who have become spiritually complacent? Listen, it didn't happen overnight. It happened a little bit, a little bit, a little bit here, a little bit there, day after day, week after week, month after month. Paul said, many will fall asleep spiritually, but you must remain faithful just because they do doesn't mean you have to don't allow the things that are going around you to keep you from remaining faithful do not be shaken do not be fearful but you must press on listen to the words hebrews 4 and 14 hold firmly to the hope that we profess Hebrews 10 and verse 23, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. Can you say amen to that? Galatians 6 and 9, do not let us grow weary while we are doing good for in due season we will reap if we faint not. Revelation 3 and verse 11 says, hold on to what you have. Church, hear me tonight. The longer that you and I go, the the closer and closer we get to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the more difficult the days will become. Spiritual deception will be at every hand. Listen, listen to me for a minute. I just want to talk to your hearts for a moment. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. The danger in deception is you don't know you're deceived until it's too late, usually. We are living in a day of rampant spiritual deception. You need the Holy Spirit. Why? You say, why don't you? Because the Bible says the Holy Spirit will only speak the things the Father speaks. The Holy Spirit will speak the things that are on the heart and the mind of God. I don't know about you, but I... Have you ever done something in life and you got uh, you got wrong directions and you got turned around? H- have you ever had somebody come up to you and deceive you, say, you know what, hey, I, I need uh, I need five dollars, ten dollars, you know, my aunt's out here in the car and everybody in the family's dying and we got to do this and to find out then later they took you. You ever felt that way? That's happened in your life. Listen. We are susceptible to deception. We are absolutely... May we as believers never think that we aren't susceptible to deception. Samson, Samson was a man born 
by God's purpose. He came to this earth, was born. He was set apart for God's purpose, yet he was deceived. David was deceived. Peter was deceived. On and on we can go with men and women who have been deceived in the process. You and I are susceptible to deception. What is the remedy for that? We need the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit sees past the things. The Holy Spirit knows things you and I don't know. There are times you get ready to do something, the Holy Spirit says, nope, 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 you need to back away from that. I'm so thankful for the Holy Spirit because I'd get myself in a big mess if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit says, nope, you don't need to talk to that person, or yes, you do need to talk to that person. You don't need to go there. You do need to go there. You need to close your ears to what's being said right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for instructing. He is the one you and I need. Listen, friends, we don't want to walk this journey without the Holy Spirit's presence. We need him every single day. You need the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. You need the fullness of the, you need to experience the fullness of the Holy Spirit in your life. The longer we go, friends, the more difficult days will become. Deception will be at every hand. But you must remain faithful. The Holy Spirit will work to keep you and I sensitive to what's happening around us. It is the Holy Spirit that will keep the fire burning in our hearts when the hearts of others will be growing cold. The greatest need of the church of 2015, friends, is a fresh immersion and a fresh baptism in the Holy Spirit. We need fresh empowerment that only comes through the work of the Holy Spirit. 1 Timothy 6 and 20, Paul told Timothy, guard what has been entrusted to you. Take action to see that you hold on to what you have. Revelation chapter 3 says, so that no one will take away your crown. My friends, many things are going to transpire during the course of the last days. But you must remain faithful. Be on your guard. Fight the good fight of faith. For we are locked into a battle. It's not a battle of flesh and blood. But it's a battle against the principalities, the powers of this dark world, against spiritual evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, Ephesians says, take up the whole armor of God so that you can take your Stand, And he says, and having done everything to stand, stand firm then. My exhortation to you tonight, stand firm. Be steadfast, unmovable. Be determined. Be determined in your faith. Tonight as you look at your life, I want you to ask yourself the question and inventory yourself. Am I growing in my walk with Christ? Listen, it won't just happen. You have to do things that helps grow your relationship with Christ. By spending greater time with Him. By being in His Word. By being in prayer. By being in fellowship with other believers and communion with the Holy Spirit, we grow in Him. Friends, if you tonight would say, you know what, I'm not, I really, I'm not growing. I'm just kind of maintaining. Listen, that's a dangerous place to be. Because you can't maintain very long. You can't just hold on very long. You and I are fighting it. Do not misunderstand me. I'm not giving you credit, but you and I are fighting a serious enemy. The devil takes no days off spiritually. The devil never takes a break from what he's doing. I encourage you, remain faithful. For he who has promised is faithful. Would you bow your heads tonight? My Father, tonight,
pray, Heavenly Father, that you tonight will encourage my brothers and sisters in the faith. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will encourage them to hold fast. You will encourage them, Father, to stand firm. You will encourage them to keep their eyes fixed on what is not seen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Father, as things worsen in our world, even greater days of difficulty, Father, ahead of us. Help us to stand firm. Help us to be found faithful. God, don't let us be, don't let us be a type of people that are falling asleep spiritually. God, would you, through the Holy Spirit, awaken our spiritual senses. Father, would you cause the wind of your Spirit to blow across the coals in our hearts. And God, would you once again ignite a flame in us. A flame that burns out of control for you. A flame that burns with passion and desire for you. Oh God, help us to remain faithful. Help us to remain faithful. But as for us, help us to remain faithful, I pray. Jesus, more than anything else, We long to stand before you, hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. Help us to stand firm, I pray in Christ's name. Amen. I'd like to open our altars for prayer. This is Sunday. It's the Lord's Day great day. I don't know about you, but I'm busy all through the week. A lot of days I just don't have a lot of extra time. Today's the day we have it. I'd encourage you today to take some time and find a place of prayer. You're welcome to come around the altars. You're welcome to find a place throughout the building. I just encourage you to find a place of prayer. Let's spend some time with him and listen, friends. Trust the Holy Spirit. You can pray, Holy Spirit, if I've been getting spiritually lethargic and complacent, will you bring it to my attention? He'll do it. He'll do it. I don't want to be deceived. But I want to walk faithful all the way to the end. I'd like to open the altars for prayer, and I encourage you to find a place of prayer When you are done, feel free to be dismissed tonight. May God's grace and mercy rest greatly upon your life. God bless you. The altars are open.